Let's talk about eyes in dogs. Um, I'm going to go over um, what the problems can be with eyes, why they're caused, how you can diagnose which problems you've got, and what the treatments might be. And I will give you a preamble as to why I'm doing this. I have had an eye problem that I went to the uh, doctor for here recently, and I learned a lot about eyes. Things that I didn't know about eyes that made sense that you could diagnose yourself. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is common sense, but you yeah, probably haven't heard of a lot of it. So if you go through all of this 20 minutes worth of rubbish I'm talking about, you will know a lot more about eyes. And at some point, you will need to know about those eyes for your dog or maybe even for yourself. So here we go. Very common thing that people see in dogs they don't like is tear stains. They get this rust red orangey color that goes from the corner of their eye down their muzzle either side of their nose. And you can see that a lot, especially in um, dogs with white fur. And although the dogs probably don't care about it, cosmetically it doesn't look very good and you'd probably like to reduce that. So let's talk about that first. Then we'll start talking about real eye issues. So the tear stains are formed because the red blood cells are broken down in your body and they get excreted in urine and they get excreted in sweat and in tears. And it's that hemoglobin, this, the iron portion of that, that makes this rust color that then produces a stain. So what can you do about it? Well, you're going to have limited success on this, but here are some things that I've done and things that you might try. So the first thing is, Wipe the, wipe the stain away. Get rid of the stain when you can. Do that a couple of times a day. That will help reduce the staining. There are products like Angel Eyes that come in either wipes that you can wipe down their eyes. If you do that, make sure when you're finished that you make sure you don't get any of this stuff into their eye itself because it can irritate them because they typically have things like some small amount of bleach or ammonia in them to get rid of the stain. So be careful with those. But Angel Eyes would be one thing. Then there are chews that you can give a dog that basically change, supposedly change the chemical composition of the eyes to get rid of that red stain. Um, I've tried those and didn't work very well for me. You can clip the hair much shorter. If, they've, if you clip the hair much shorter, then it's less likely to stain. That's another thing that you can do. And then the last thing on this is diet. There are some things that people show that they have some success, especially with things like raw diets, that can help the staining. So if you've got excessive staining and you don't like it, you might try, try a different diet after you try these other things. Um, and if you've got a lot more staining on one eye or only on one eye, then you need to follow up with all the other things I'm talking about because that means you've probably got some issue, other, other issue going on. Specifically, the more tears that a dog produces that don't drain properly, they will spill over the eyelids and those will contribute more to staining, and that could be fixed by sorting out the underlying problem. All right, so that's stains. Next complaint, watery, watering eyes. Um, so what is causing this? Of course, one of the things that that can cause is more staining, but what is causing the underlying excessive tearing of the eyes? Let's talk about the mechanism is what's going on in the eye, a normally functioning eyeball. So what you've got is, um, you've got two glands at the top of your eye, one over here that produces tears, same on dogs, of course, one that produces tears, so one here and here produce tears, and one on the, either, on the inside that's the bohemian gland that produces kind of a greasy substance. So the purpose of the, of the um, tears is to flush water over the eyes continuously so that contaminants and particles can get washed out of the eye. And what happens is, is they then form on the bottom eye lid and they roll towards the inside where the nose is and there's a small hole called the punctal right there and the punctal then drains that excessive fluid down behind your nose that's why by the way if you cry you have a runny nose it's because you've got excessive tears they go down the punctal they go into your nasal cavity and it produces you know you know watery eyes and also the fact that you want to blow your nose right so the other gland, the behemoth gland up here, produces kind of a greasy substance that coats along with the water from the, uh, the lacrimal gland, the eye gland, the tear gland, that makes that tear stay on your eyeball for longer. And if that is not producing the, the, the greasy stuff, then the water sheens off the eye, 
your eye then, you actually have what's called a dry eye. It doesn't sound like it. But you actually have a dry eye, which actually makes this gland produce more tears that then cannot get filled, go down the, uh, the, the punctal hole and it spills over the corner of your eye. Um, so that's the, me the mechanism is water, grease, and a hole to drain it with a constant curtain of water going over your eyes. That's how the eyes stay from being um, too dry and too irritated. And if any of this stuff fails, then you're, you're going to have an irritated eye. If you've got excessive tearing, then the next question is, is it both eyes or is it just one eye? So eyelash issues. An eyelash that's rubbing on the eyeball is going to cause irritation. And because of the irritation, you'll get excessive tearing. And because of that, you could have a watery eye or see water spilling down the side of the face. Um, so there's three possibilities on eyelashes. One is, is that you've got an eyelash that has grown in and it's underneath the lid and it consequently causing irritation. You can have an eyelash that has grown in on itself and caused a bump on the eyelid where you've got kind of an irritated spot because now you've got a bump there that irritates the eyelid. Or you can have an eyelash that's in the wrong place. It's actually down inside the eyelid where it shouldn't be. So you can diagnose those things. First off, you're going to find one eye is watering more than the other. And the effective eye will be watering. Go look at it under a good light, maybe even with a magnifying glass or a loop, and take a good look at your dog's eye. So if you see that there's an eyelash in the wrong place, you could just simply remove it. Well, when I said if you see there's eyelash that's growing inside, you can remove the eyelash. If you see there's an eyelash that's growing inside the membrane, in the red membrane, then you probably have to go to the vet to have a diagnosis on how to handle that. Um, okay, so that's eyelashes. Let's talk about eyelids. So the, the bottom eye, so you've obviously got two lids, top and bottom, and you're continuously blinking. And what that does is it helps wipe away that film of water so that any contaminants can be drained down through the punctal, the hole in the corner of your nose, and then refresh with new tears. Right, that's what's supposed to happen. A quite a common thing to happen is you've got a lash problem, or a more common thing, and a very common thing is, is you have what's called octopia. You have an eyelid that is pulled away slightly from the eyeball. And that can do two things. The first is, if that eyelid towards the nose pulls away on the bottom too much, then the fluids that are draining down the eye, the tears, don't go down the punctal, but they spill over that eyelid as co-consequently you see an eye that is watering. You'll see this a lot in older people. In fact, that's one of the problems I had, is that you'll see they have watery eyes. And what's going on is, is the, you've got excessive eye tear, tear production, and then it doesn't drain properly through this punctal, and it streams down the face. Next cause of a problem is an actual physical abnormality on the eyeball itself. For example, would be a corneal ulcer, where um, there is a, uh, it could be a dermoid. A dermoid is actually kind of a lump with maybe hair, so it's grown in the wrong place on the eyeball. Well, hairy eyeball <laughs> sounds terrible. Get in humans. I've never seen a person with a hairy eyeball, but apparently it happens. I mean, it's not really a joke. Um, but corneal ulcers, dermoids, basically, you should be able to see these things where there is a physical lump or, or typically on the white, it might be on the corner itself, but you can see there's a bump there. And those are going to require that you go to the vet to get a proper diagnosis. Next one's going to be a foreign particle. There is something on the eyeball. It could be, I'll give you an example of this. I've done this to myself a number of times. Been grinding on a piece of metal with a grinder. Don't have glasses on. I've got a little piece of, of, of the shard that's being shaved off with the grinder. Hit me in the eyeball and got embedded in the eyeball. I and mean, then it irritates the crap out of your eye. In those situations, sometimes blinking, flushing, you can get rid of it. But if not, it's time to go to the vet. So if you can see a particular area that's obviously irritated, then it could be there's a foreign particle in there that can simply, simply be removed and fix the problem. And remember, lift the eyes up, look underneath the top and bottom eyelids because it can be embedded on the tissue, not on the eyeball, but actually on the actual inner eyelids, top and bottom. So foreign particles. Next one, trauma. Physically, the eyeball has been damaged. 
dog could have got into a fight. Cats are notorious for scratching dogs. Um, you can get a scratch on the corner on the eyeball. These things typically will fix themselves, but you know, it may make sense in those situations to have some lubricating drops in there to help that situation. But go take a look again. If you can see there's physically a scratch on the eyeball, um, then probably just wait and see what happens. If this has been going on for some time, definitely time to go to the vet. And if it's, you know, if you've really got a, an eyeball that's got problems, then that obviously requires a vet's visit. Allergies, very common thing in dogs. Common thing in humans too. Tammy, she has a problem with cedar trees. When cedar, cedar pollen's high, she gets really watery eyes. So allergies, they're gonna affect both eyes. It's not gonna be just uh, one side only has been affected. Both eyes are gonna be watery. And if you can't find any other underlying problems, and this is something that recurs on a regular basis and tends to be a bit seasonal, goes up and goes down, very likely the allergies are the problem. And I mean, there's some things that you can do for dogs, just like human beings for allergies. You know, there's nasal sprays and things that you can put in the eyes that can help these situations. So I'm not going to tell you specifically what those things are, but the thing to, is to recognize that a lot of these problems are in fact just simply allergies. And I'm about to run out of room on the board. Structural problems with the eye. You know, you could have eyes, for instance, you'll see people who have eyes that are bulging and there are treatments for that and likewise in dogs. And that can produce an eyeball that physically, you know, your, your eye looks like you look like, I don't know if you remember the comedian Martin Feldman. But he had these eyes that looked huge and the eyeball was looked like it was protruding and it was protruding a little bit it's because of pressure from the back behind the eyeball. Those things can be treated. Those can cause problems. You know, typically those things you'll see in both eyes. Again, that's obviously going to have to be a specialist who's going to have to give you some ideas about what you can do if your dog's got bulging eyes. And of course, there are some dogs that have more likely to have bulging eyes than others who have these problems. I mean, an example would be, um, oh, good Lord, I can't think of the names of the dogs now, but maybe Boston Terriers might have a bit more of this. Certain breeds have, you know, have, can have these bulging eyes and they'll be more susceptible to having eye issues because of structural things going on with the eye. All right, let's talk treatments. So, watery eyes. Eyes that, well, of course, the stains, we talked about that. We talked about various different products. We're not going to go there anymore. Watery eyes. Well, if you've got eyes that are watering excessively, you can go to the vet and they can do a shimmer test where they take a, basically a little piece of tissue paper and they put that on the eye and then they see how much wetting goes on over a period of one minute. And they can see whether you've got abnormal watering going on. So that's one thing. You could do this yourself. I mean, with my problem that I had, I just looked at a magnifying mirror at my two eyes and I could see the water starting to build up on the bottom eyelid, and it was only doing it on one eye. So it was quite obvious that I was getting excessive tearing going on. And so it was in only in one eye. So then, you know, I went down this path as to what the hell's going on. So eyelashes, look, this is easy. Just go look at the eye. If you can see there's an eyelash that's ingrown, in the wrong place, grown back onto itself, that's a fairly easy, simple thing. And again, going to be on a single eye. Uh, eyelids. Look at the eyelids and see whether the eyelid fits nicely against the eyeball. Um, if it doesn't and you see that one eye has it pulled away a little bit, there are surgeries that can be done to tighten that thing up. It's got, I think it's called a bluff or a rectomy or something like that. In humans it is anyway. Where this can be fixed, especially you know in older people like me where we have eye bags, this can cause this eye bagging, can cause a general pull away of the eyelid bottom from the eyeball and cause problems, it's fixable. It does take surgery. Um, corneal ulcers. If you've got a corneal ulcer, it's gonna to have to be removed. Um, so straight, I mean, it's, you have gotta to go to a surgeon to get this done. So if you see a mass on the eyeball, there's no point mucking around with this, go to the vet. One thing I didn't talk about, and I should have done, is a cherry eye. So a cherry eye is where you get a piece of membrane, a, Dogs have an extra eye part of their eyelid here in the corner, and that can get inflamed and it can bulge out. And you can get a fairly big lump forming there called cherry eye. Um, cherry eye can be massaged sometimes and pushed back in place. I do have a video on that. A lot of the time, it does require some kind of surgery. There's two ways you can fix this. You can simply click this nictating membrane and get rid of it, cut it off. That's simple, easy. It can lead to dry eye. Or you can have surgery done where they actually put some stitches in and they pull this membrane up out of the way. More involved, more expensive, and doesn't always work. All right. Foreign particles in the eye, 
flush the eye out. Go get some eye drops from Walmart for human beings and flush the eye, eye out as best you possibly can and get that dog to blink a whole bunch and see if you can remove the foreign, art, foreign, the, the foreign particle. If that doesn't work, then you may have to go to the doctor. They may have to give something to quiet the dog down and physically remove that foreign particle. Trauma to the eye, if it's something that is going on and it's obviously a big deal, vet time right away. If it's something where it's a simple scratch, you can probably just take your time and see what happens. Typically, I think that most docs are gonna give some kind of um, a steroid drop to help those situations. Um, allergies, there are allergy medicines. There are medicines you can put in the eyes for allergies. They all make sense. And then a structural thing, there's not much you can do about a structural problem. If there's a structural issue with the eye, you're just gonna to have to live with it. I'm gonna say one last thing for me, uh, but I had this gland that's for probably most of my life has not been secreting the right amount of the oily substance. I have now a USB plug-in um, eye patch, well, covers my eyes, and it makes this nice warm heat, and I leave that on for about 20 minutes, and man, it's made a huge difference. That was the solution for my eyes. It was a $20 item on Amazon. Completely fixed my eye problem. No more watering eyes, just simply by getting this gland to work properly. You could do the same thing for a dog. There's no reason why, I mean, I think the dog would like it. You know, you just lay the dog down in your lap, and you put the eye patch on, on, his, on, on eyes, both of So this is, this is what fixed my problem. This is a USB heated eye, eye band, maybe, closing the USB. Um, and and uh, <laughs> look, see now, so I, don't, I don't want any comments on this, but there it is. You just put on your eye like that, and it produce, you can adjust the level of heat, and it produces a nice warmth, 20 minutes worth of this. And within five minutes of doing this, I take this off and take a look and I can see that my eye's greasy and I can't see quite out of my eye probably because of the grease that's now being produced from this gland not working. That might help a lot of dogs. I mean, I haven't seen anybody talk about this, but I mean, that is, that's a $24 on Amazon and completely fixed my problem. So anyway, um, I think that's it. I've rattled on a whole bunch, but there is obviously, you know, a lot can go on with eyes, both your eyes and your dog's eyes and knowing a little bit about what to look for, um, how to diagnose and how to treat, treat it, I think will get you a long way. And you don't necessarily need a vet for this stuff. Now, it doesn't mean that your vet doesn't have a place in it, because obviously they do, but any of these issues start off with you understanding the mechanism and being able to do some self-diagnosis of both yourself and your dog so you have an idea about what the heck's going on. Be nice to your dogs, thanks for watching. Hey, thanks Bye. for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.